knee drained after game three and had the five point game. Boy, he's been a different player. The 30 points in game four, the 28 points in game five, and now 39 here tonight. Some of the fans heading for the exit. This equals the largest lead of the game as we're under three minutes remaining. Hill's jump shot. That's a good three pointer for Hill. And every time it looks like Miami's going to put this one away, the Pacers hit a shot. But they can't afford many more Wade buckets in the Anakin. Wade on the drive, goes to the rim, shot is up, won't go. Here comes George. Hill fakes the three, trying to get contact, shot won't go. Hibber tips it up and in. It's back to six with 2.28 remaining. Timeout Miami. Indiana won't go away. 97-91. An elimination game for the Pacers. Desperate now. Down by as many as 11. Well, good attack by George Hill. And then Hibbert carving out space in the paint. Nice tip. Pacers hanging around. Down six. Pick and roll the Pacers trying to hang around here. Roy Hibbert, the all-star with the tip in. It's a, it's a six-point game within arm's reach. But the broad shoulders of number six, LeBron, hangs and hits. He had 28. Add the two together. It's 69 points from those two. That duo, dynamic indeed, and it was far too much for the Indiana Pacers to answer, even though they had home court in this game. The Heat will enjoy a little bit of rest and get ready for either Philadelphia or Boston. Back to the men who called it, Mike Breen and Jeff Van Gundy. Men. Scott, thank you. LeBron James gets booed as he walks off the floor, but the respect factor has to be there no matter who you root for. He was superb the last three games. Dwayne, White, uh, Dwayne Wade was brilliant as well. And the Miami Heat showing Jeff after falling behind 2-1 to one and down by double figures in game four. They showed they can take a punch and bounce back. It certainly helps when you have those two guys on your roster. And they were, like you said, Mike, challenged. The Indiana Pacers pushed them hard, but Wade and James together is a dynamic duo. And tonight, Dwayne Wade was just an incredible shot maker with these floaters in the paint before Hibbert could get there. And then the split and the strength. And when you're MVP, takes a back seat but knows when to get it going the, the power here to wrong foot this layup be able to absorb the contact from Hibbert and finish with the weak hand and then the attack of West again at this point no shot blocking in 28 points and again look at this power to go through the contact and finish these plays a tremendous performance by both men and not only scoring points but doing it efficiently over the last three games the shooting percentage terrific obviously they're rebounding they're distributing and number one once again their defense and that's what makes this team go and leads them to so many offensive opportunities meanwhile for indiana very difficult ending to what has been a terrific season but when you turn the ball over so many times like they did tonight it's almost impossible to beat miami it is there's a 13 turnover differential tonight and that makes it so very hard on you to overcome. And like I said, some were forced and some were just bad passes and bad catches and bad dribbles. I mean, these are just poor decisions. Yeah, the defense has something to do with it, but it's really just very basic basketball where the pass decisions are just not right. Meanwhile, going forward now, they'll await the winner, um, Miami will, of Boston and Philadelphia. After game three, Dwayne Wade shoots two for 13. He has just five points. Of course, he had that uh, argument, shall we say, with Eric Spolstra on the sidelines in one of the games. People saying, what's wrong with Dwayne Wade? Well, obviously, there's nothing wrong right now. No, frustration ruled the day in that game three loss, and he bounced back terrifically, as did their team. They're a very good team. Whether they have enough to go all the way unless Chris Bosch comes back, it remains to be seen. But this is a heck of a bounce back uh, comeback in this series, and they'll be rested and ready 
come Eastern Conference Finals. They'll be rested because game one of the Eastern Conference Finals will not be until Monday. Now they get to watch and see who they play that game seven Saturday between Philadelphia and Boston. So not till Monday they'll get rested. They'll get Udonis Haslam back and maybe Chris Bosh. That remains to be seen. Wade and James brilliant here tonight to clinch the series in six games on to the Conference Finals for Miami. We go on to Michael Wilbon in the studio. And we were talking to Eric Spolstra, and we asked him, who would you rather play, Celtics or Sixers? We know he said, oh, it doesn't make much difference. So we're not asking Eric Spolstra. <laughs> I'm asking you because you can be candid. If you were the Miami Heat, Irvin, mm -hmm. who would you rather play, Philly or Boston? Well, Michael, when you're trying to be the best, you want to beat the best. So when, once the Chicago Bulls went out, now you want to play the Boston Celtics because you're trying to be the best. And they know that Boston... They would have to play hard and be on top of their game to beat them. And I think that Miami says they want to send a clear message to whoever wins the West that, hey, we just took care of the Boston Celtics and we're coming for you next. And I think that will keep Miami also playing great basketball. They need a challenge. They need they? a challenge. See, every time they're challenged, they play great. Indiana challenged them in the series, and you saw what happened. Both LeBron James and Dwayne Wade responded to that challenge. Can Boston mount the kind of challenge? Can they physically do the kinds of things that we saw them do in 2008, 2010, where they're a champion and then a runner-up? Can you see Boston being able to summon that one more time Michael, against Miami? Michael, that's a great question. We know talent-wise they have it. Physically, can they do it for seven straight games? I don't know. But I tell you, they still have that championship mentality. And Rondo gives them a chance. Why? Because Miami can't match up against Rajon Rondo. He'll be the one X factor that they really can't match up against. And Kevin Garnett gives Miami Heat a lot of problems as well. Philadelphia 76 was the number eight seed. The Boston Celtics, that would be a bigger skin on the wall. Size advantage, Kurt. They did a great job in the first half of getting the ball in sky, inside. They scored 34 points in the first half in the paint. This is where their strength was, and they had a focal point of getting the ball inside early. It was something that trying to take advantage of the matchup with West being guarded by Shane Battier. He outweighs Battier by 40 pounds. There was just no contest there. But Indiana in the first half did a real good job of penetrating into the Heat's defense. You wonder about the health of Danny Granger, also about his temper. You see a whole lot of gold in the middle for the Pacers on the shot chart. Indiana only made one shot outside the paint. Hey, it worked for them. They were up 28-21 after that first quarter. But the second quarter, a whole different story. That belonged to... Well, welcome to Wade County, Dwayne Wade. And the moments later, Wade behind the back to LeBron James. Uh, that was a nice pass, but I, I first thought this was a fumble, and ergo not a travel. But after looking at it again, that was a travel. But too much Dwayne Wade in the second half. They tried Jones on him. They tried Paul George on him. They tried Dante Jones on him. They could not find a way to get him stopped. He was posting up. He was driving. 20 points in the second quarter. Owns the quarter, and in the second half, down low, a little hook from uh, Joel Anthony puts the heat up for. Next heat possession, you're wondering, will somebody other than those two step up? Well, Chalmers and Miller both had double digits. Welcome to the game, Mike Miller. Finally, Mark, Mike Miller was able to knock down some outside shots. He hit four three-pointers in this ballgame, and it's huge. Spreading out an Indiana defense anytime you can get outside shots going down. Miller hit the three, then Mario Chalmers hit the three, and just like that, it's a 10-point game. Finally back down to the post. It's like for times, Indiana and forgot about it. Absolutely. This is where their strength was. They went from scoring 34 points in the paint in the first half to only scoring 12 in the second half. They completely forgot about that, but Miami didn't. They knew where their bread and butter was. They were getting the ball to Dwayne Wade, and he was penetrating into the heart of Indiana's defense, and not once did they try and get out and trap him to try to take the ball out of his hands. There he splits it, one, two, and three, the hard way for number three. He played like an absolute beast. If it was getting his knee drained, if it was figuring out the spacing without Bosch involved, whatever it was, he was a superstar, and so was this guy. Well, anytime LeBron James has the spacing, he can attack the floor. He can see where his teammates are because Indiana is focused on all of his uh, 
uh, LeBron's teammates. Now he can penetrate. Now he can post up. Now he can knock down outside shots. He's too big and strong for anybody on Indiana to guard. Indiana had a fantastic season. They yep. had a whole bunch of depth. But the two best players in the series played for the same team. They combined for 69 points tonight as the Heat win game six and the series. Eric Spolstra and the boys move on to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, you know, that's really uh, the epitome of, of what a 2-3 matchup should be in the playoffs. Uh, and it should be that competitive. Uh, and that's what it was. It was a tough, physical, very competitive series. And we hope, we hope uh, that the series uh, will not be marred by what happened uh, in the last game. Uh, because uh, you take that out, uh, it, it really was uh, just a competitive uh, you know, hotly contested uh, a series, and that's what it should be remembered for, okay? Uh, both teams laying it all out on the line, uh, and, uh, you know, we had to really earn it. Uh, and there was a lot of ebbs and, you know, ups and downs in this series, but our guys were able to stay the course uh, and focus on the task at hand uh, and be able to grind out, you know, obviously a tough win to close this one out here in their building. Eric, uh, can you remember a three-game stretch where LeBron and uh, uh, Dwayne have played so well together? And what, you know, what was the what was the faucet that went on? After